Hello everybody, I'm Ard, and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. This week, I think we're going to continue on into Industrial Craft 2 and try to get some of the backlog of stuff we haven't touched there done. Because what I actually want to do is get to the Matter Fabricator and Replicator, but we've got a lot of prerequisites ahead of us for that. If we look on the quest book, you can see how most of it's still red or gray and we haven't even used it. The Matter Fabricator is right here and its whole chain goes down this way. So to do that, we need to build all of these other red things first. So I figured we would start this week by setting up the actual ore multiplication chain that Industrial Craft has. Well, so far, we've only used the macerator. The next step is to build the ore washing plant, which is the first step to make it to purify the ore, which then leads to the thermal centrifuge, which we'll also have to build the laser to do. So and the laser is kind of fun. So I guess let's start by going down this chain and doing the canning machine. We already have the block cutting machine and then the ore washing plant. Let's start with the fluid solid canning machine. It's actually really, really simple to make. It's really, really basic parts. We just haven't had any real need to make it in the past because its main use is to, well, make one fluid into another using things like CF powder or lapazuli to make coolant and whatnot, which is, you know, useful or biomass. You can can things like food, which, interesting but you know not useful or we can do our main use which is actually filling up uh, nuclear fuel rods for fuel for the reactor which is what we're going to be using this for at least in the shorter term we'll probably make another one for coolant later but for now let's just start with this so I'm just gonna go put this in the wall we're not actually gonna use it but this is what we will be using it for in a relatively near future to make fuel for a reactor just gonna put it right up here as you can see I also upgraded my universal cables while I was doing this because I figure why not and we'll just put it there the interface looks exactly as you saw on the crafting screen but we're just gonna let that sit there for now the next step is the ore washing plant, which takes ore, crushed ore from the macerator, passes water through it, which is what would be in here, and refines it and gives you a secondary byproduct. So for right now, I'm gonna put this here in a quick and dirty sort of way, just to get it working, because we're not actually gonna make a way to deal with the byproducts yet. We really need to do that, but I'll probably have to put it in a compact machine just for space reasons to do that. And I don't know honestly how much I care, because I really want the, what I really want is the thermal centrifuge to process uranium with. And we'll wanna build a process around that more so than the uh, near ore tripling we get otherwise, because I can do that with mechanism instead better for actual ore. Okay, so I have the machine set into the wall now. I added a macerator on top that ejects out the bottom into the ore washing plant. There's a water source below the ore washing plant to run out water, and this ejects into the crate. I'm going to put some iron ore into the macerator. I'm going to realize I lost my bottle of time somewhere and don't have speed upgrades to these made, so I had to wait a little bit. When you come in here, you can see it's processing, the ma it's mastering this is normal. This comes into the ore washing plant and just stacks up here and goes very, very slowly. Um, I really need speed upgrades. And then it dumps the end results into here. So purified crushed ore, tiny piles of iron dust and stone dust. The next step would be to pass it into the thermal centrifuge to process the purified crushed ore, which will then create even more piles of iron dust and or second, another byproduct um, and uh, give us more ore duplication out of it. But this is the first step. This is also the slow, ugly step. Um, this thing is significantly slower than the macerator. So I'm gonna go look around for my bottle of time and then we'll talk about the next steps. Crisis averted, it was sitting inside the shulker box I used in the last episode to build the building. I just shoved it in with all the Batania stuff somehow. Oops, but I'm glad I found it because I didn't want to lose a bottle of time with like nearly 30 hours of time logged into it. So the next thing I think we want to work on is opening up this side of it so we can get to the thermal centrifuge. To do that, we have to make the blast furnace. Well, and the electric heater and universal fields, fluid cells. Most of these are pretty simple. This is just all really basic stuff. The electric heater, pretty much the same thing, but including a battery, which is also simple. And the universal fuel cell is just tin and glass. So let me go make those real fast. All right, so I made the devices and originally I was just gonna shove these in a box and forget they existed. But then I realized I promised a long time ago that I would show how to set up steel production with the Industrial Craft 2 stuff. And these devices are how you go about doing it, minus one they don't tell you about. So as to why you might wanna use Industrial Craft, well, it's because it strictly uses iron 
and no carbon. There is no coal involved in this process at all. And it generates its own slag, which is useful for its own purposes, mostly making concrete. So how you go about setting this up, you start by putting a heater in. And this copper spit right here has to be what touches the blast furnace. So you need to rotate it to face the same direction. The same thing with the blast furnace. Like if I, if I put this down here, Yep, you'll see that it has the copper. I need to rotate that to the bottom to touch the heater. Now, this doesn't do anything right now because the heater is missing something important. It's not generating heat units, even though it has power. And that's because you need to add copper coils. The more you add, the faster it will heat up. As you can see, it's now creating 40 heat units that it's passing off to the blast furnace. Now, if I open up the blast furnace and add some iron, you'll notice that while well, it's slowly heating up, but this is also not going to work. And this isn't gonna work because it requires uh, compressed air to work. So we need to put that in there. You, you see how it loaded a bunch of air into here and empty the, fl the universal fuel fluid cell. Now, how do we go about refilling this? Well, first things first, we need to put an ejector on it, which means we need it to come out the top. So we'll put the ejector up there. Then we need a compressor, which we'll put up here and that we'll need to output to the side. And we'll put that in there and then we'll put some cans in here so that they fill up with air. Now the one device they don't tell you about is the electric sorting machine, which is relatively simple to make. It just requires a bunch of pistons to make the ejectors, which are the same thing we use to eject out of the machines. And what this lets you do is set up filters as to what can go where. So going down, we want it to send the full air canisters and going back up to the south, we want it to send the empty ones. So here we've got full ones in this inventory, we want to send that down and we'll put that there. So now we take the empty ones and we want to pass those back to the south to refill. We'll put that back in there and they instantly shift back over and go back into the compressor to refill, which will then cycle back through here and the circle goes round and round and we fill this up with air. And now you can see that it's consuming the air and slowly processing this into steel without using coal at all. The one downside is if you don't have anything processing it, the heater still stays on all the time. And even slapping a lever on it like this doesn't turn it off. It just stays on. So that's the downside to this. So I might tear this out. It's still useful because it's still it's basically free coal, uh, steel processing. So this is how I did it in one of uh, my earlier games. It's, it's actually a pretty decent compact setup compared to the immersive engineering version, but it's not as fast. But for now, this is a step I hadn't planned on doing and is still fine, so I'm not gonna complain. Now, onwards to the laser. So the mining laser, pew, pew, pew. This thing at the point of the game we're at is not actually all that hard to make. The scary looking thing here is the energy crystal. This is just put an uh, energenium dust in the compressor, which is just crushed up diamonds and some redstone. So not that hard to make. The biggest issue is it uses a lot of power. And thankfully I can toss it into a mechanism energy cube to power it because I do not have a big enough source of EU power otherwise because I don't have enough big enough transformer or energy pad to put it in. So let's go take this out and show you how it works. It's actually kind of neat, even though this isn't what we're going to use it for we're gonna build stuff with it. So I went back to the dungeon that was near my base back way back in one of the earlier episodes just to use this as an example of how it works. So you just right click it to fire a laser. Well, currently it just doesn't do a whole lot and you have to be really close, right? Well, there's a mode button that you can use. It's not set uh, to a default in this pack. In my case, I set it to M, which is what the default's supposed to be. And then you right click and you see it says long range. And well, okay, seems to work better. And then horizontal and then superheat, which will smelt ore if it runs into it. Scatter, which takes out a humongous area. Let's actually put it back on superheat. And, uh, yep, there's the ingot right there. And then explosive, which does that. Three by three, which does the same thing as scatter, but smaller and mining, which just does really long tunnels. So, uh, it's useful for clearing out large areas all, all very quickly. Anyways, that's how the mining laser works. As you can see from my bar at the bottom, just from what little I've used, it's already sucked away a good amount of the power. So if you're gonna use it, you need to bring battery packs with you. 
because it will drain it very, very quickly otherwise. That said, what we're actually going to use this for later is to make the thermal centrifuge because it's one of the ingredients to make it. So we're just going to stash that away for later. And then when we come to make the actual replicator, we'll need to use uh, two more for the pattern storage. So thankfully they aren't too hard to make in the scheme of things. The next step up before we get to the thermal centrifuge is the induction furnace, which is something I am not actually going to use. But overall, this is actually another thing that's relatively easy to make, but it requires an advanced machine casing and an electric furnace. So even though I'm not going to use it, let's talk about the induction furnace for a minute, okay? So the way this works is it actually has two input slots. It can smelt down two items at once. Um, that's pretty much its whole shtick. It's not all that impressive in the scheme of things, honestly. And it can't do, there's nothing it can do really better than a normal electric furnace anyways, because it takes the exact same upgrades. It can just do it effectively twice as fast or two different things at once. So I don't really ever see the need to use this. As far as I'm aware, there's nothing this can do that anything else can do in, in industrial craft. So this is just getting shoved in a box. And finally to the thermal centrifuge, which we've been trying this whole episode to get to. So thankfully, now that we've done everything else, this is, was pretty easy to make. This just requires a bunch of things we've made before that aren't too hard, and the mining laser we just made. So I put that together. I'm gonna go put it in the wall next to the crate that the ore washer dumps into and pray this works. It may not actually. I ultimately need to put a better filtering on this whole thing, and I might need, I probably should move it into a compact machine if I'm actually gonna use this setup. Uh, so that I have more room to work with and can get inputs and outputs out of it more easily. But for now, let's put it here. And we're gonna need a pulling upgrade to pull from the, the bottom. Put it in the wall and let's put that in there. It pulled in the purified crushed ore, iron ore, but I think it's gonna break if it tries to grab everything else to see if it can even do it. Oh, maybe this will work. Anyhow. So we'll put this back in. So this has a startup time. So if you don't, if this isn't constantly running, it has to heat up this bar first to max it out before it will start processing your ore. Uh, to get this running at a decent speed, you really need speed upgrades in this, or you need multiples of these running in parallel. Same as the ore washer, this is even slower. But this gets us uh, even more ore out of it long term. I also realized I could just eject it back out of the bottom too. That I don't know why that didn't occur to me sooner, but let me speed this up so you can see how this works. So as you can see, it's processing this and it dumps that back out and dumps it back into here. And as you can see, these are all ticking up and now we're also getting some gold dust from the iron. Because when passed through the centrifuge, you can sometimes get different materials than you normally would. Like copper can return gold and then, and this is a big one, nickel can return platinum. So there's some decent things you can get out of it. So you can use it to shortcut to something that you can only get in certain other more tedious ways. Uh, I mean, this is honestly kind of tedious too because you actually need the ore. Um, we could we could actually wire this up to our sieving system to do this, which isn't a terrible idea. We could possibly do that, but then I've got to introduce universal cables into that mess. Actually, does it work with XNet? I don't know, guys. I should go test that. XNet may or may not blow up these machines. I'm not actually certain. Something to try. But that's for a problem for another day because I think I'm gonna call it here. We made a lot of progress through industrial craft and this allows us to get to the next step of setting up the replicator. So as always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.